Fam from Rovaniemi, I'm Josh. And I'm Ashley. Welcome to the Way Way. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up when you watch the video and you like it. And be sure to hit the little notification bell so you know when our fun little videos come out. We are continuing our Nordic summer series here in Rovaniemi, Finland. Today we are going to the Arcticum Science Center and Museum to learn more about, I presume, the Arctic in Finland. And Lapland! And Lapland! It's my goal with these videos that every time you watch them, you come away learning something new. Well, today is not any different because we are going to learn about Lapland in the Arctic and I know nothing about it, so I know what I'm going to be learning. <laughs> and my favorite part is to share with you guys what I've learned. So hopefully it's new stuff that you've never heard before. I'm looking forward to it. I love museums. They're so fun. And I, mean, I know that I'm going to come away with like a better appreciation of the land and the people who lived here. I love that. It's so cool to learn about the culture. The museum and science portion of the museum and science place. What do you, what do you even call it? It's an exhibit? A giant museum. There you go. Muse, history and science. Science and museum. Oh, We're gonna go check out stuff about the Arctic. <laughs> exhibit. Exhibit. Um, See? It's not easy. Exhibition. All right. <laughs> Some of you guys in the comments asked if we were going to be in the Arctic, and we had no idea. We were like, mm, we don't know. But according to this map, that's the Arctic Circle. <laughs> and part of the city is just north of that. So we are right here, and the city is literally, according to this map, on the Arctic Circle. In fact, so. someone, uh, one of our guides already told us that the center of town in Rovaniemi is just south of the Arctic Circle and parts mm -hmm. of the town are north of it. And if you watched our video yesterday where we were floating on a lake, we actually drove north of the city, so we were actually for, like in the Arctic, yeah. which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. And then later we're going up to Kiruna, uh -huh, and that's like far, Sweden. that's like full on into the Arctic Circle, like up in here. Yeah, supposedly like some scientists consider the Arctic Circle in different areas, so I know it's yeah. controversial. Like here's the tree line, and that's the tree line, and like botanists would say that's the Arctic Circle because mm -hmm. trees don't go be grow beyond that. So I think it's one of those controversial things where it's just a name for something and everybody has their own definitions, but I'm gonna go with this and say that we are in the Arctic. <laughs> it's the longitudinal line at what, 66 degrees? I think that's what it says. And yeah, there you go. Yeah, 66 degrees, north of the equator. In our Nordic Summer Series announcement video, we said that we'd be up north where the sun would never set during the summer. And some of you said, huh? The sun never sets? Well, we learned in elementary school and in this wonderful diagram in front of us that the earth is at like an, a little bit of a tilt toward or away from the sun depending on what time of the year it is. The sun would be in the center of our solar system. And if we're up here really north in say Finland in the summertime, the sun never quite goes behind the earth like it's it's never really in the earth's shadow of itself but in winter time it's never quite fully in the sunlight so it's shaded the whole time places down here of course they get like a normal day and then nighttime day and nighttime and the same over here day nighttime day nighttime unless you're really far north science science the ice cave. Into the ice cave. We can take, right here in the center they have an icicle for an ice block. It's actually cold. And over here, we learned that, what do they call it? Snow blindness is a thing. When it gets really bright outside, you can use these little sunglasses to shade your face from the snow. Actually, look <laughs> at the sun. I want to see, does it actually work for you? like the same thing like if it did the really? same yeah okay but, but these are not like what people use nowadays no but like you know before polarization technology was invented that was a thing that's what I've been using <laughs> so we are in the science portion of the science and museum setup it's done here by the uh, Rovaniemi 
uh, university. So I should mention, you know, the scientific part of the snow blindness. Basically what those little glasses do is they cut out all the glare from elsewhere so you can just focus on what's in front of you. Just less light overall entering your eyes, therefore it's not blinding. Science. Oh, Ashley has found a friend. It actually freaks me out to be this close to him just because I think like he just looks so real. What if he just came to life? <laughs> boop, boop. Actually, polar bears do not live in this area of Finland. They're much, much farther north, but we heard they're moving to Canada, just like mm. a lot of other people. <laughs> well, Canada's got a lot of uh, landmass up north where it's still like they can find food, you know? And this is a small one. Yeah, yeah this is not a big polar bear. And actually, their fur is not as soft as I expected. Like it's um, kind of rough, like a toothbrush, I feel oh. like. I always wondered what they felt like. School is in session, more from the Science Center. <laughs> what about the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis or whatever they're called in the South, I forget. <laughs> Basically, the way it works is it's not magic, though they're all great folklore stories in this museum about them. Basically, the sun emits particles with the solar rays. They get blown towards the Earth, and then the Earth's own magnetic field deflects oh, most of what? It deflects most oh. of them, and then sucks some of them in. Because of the gravity. At the poles, right? Where, because you know, gravity and stuff like this, it sucks them in right yeah. here. And then um, the particles basically explode in the atmosphere, I suppose, due to friction. And then depending on what the elements are, like nitrogen, oxygen, or other things, they produce different colors. So green is the most popular, well, common, I common. guess. Yeah, yeah, common. Sort of a pinkish color also in blue, and then red Purple. is really rare. Yeah. Because uh, it's made of something that's, uh, let's look at the facts. <laughs> so the greenish, yellow, and red are created by oxygen and then the blue and purple are originate from nitrogen so you get this beautiful red green yellow from oxygen yeah yeah Is that it? <laughs> Listen, we're not scientists we're figuring this out as we go but i've always wondered like what exactly causes the aurora borealis and there you have it yeah and here in rovaniami they have 200 days of the year about where they have actually the aurora borealis and they can kind of predict it but there's so many variables it can last for like 15 minutes or an hour there could be cloud yeah. cover and there's still exactly. the aurora borealis and you never if see there it. are clouds it's still happening just behind the clouds and you can't see them i mean it happens in the daytime you just <laughs> yeah. can't see it it's so cool and definitely on my bucket list to see one day eventually yeah we've been to iceland twice to see them and we haven't what you may not know about Finland is that they also have an indigenous people called the Sami. Just like uh, in Alaska, we have the Inuit, and I'm sure in other places of like Canada, they have other Arctic peoples. I, it's pretty common to have indigenous peoples, but I didn't know that Finland had them. So the Sami people were here, and uh, there's others that were over in like Russia and different places. They covered parts of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. But today, they still exist. There was this whole period where they sort of um, tried to conquer them all and turn them all into Christians, and it sort of destroyed the culture to a certain point. But they're bringing it back, and today, there are, uh, many of the young people are very proud to be Sami. Interestingly, though, and I didn't know this, you can sort of self-declare to be Sami. So if your grandmother has declared to be Sami, even if, you are, haven't, even if your parents haven't declared themselves as Sami, you can then declare yourself as Sami. You can also choose not to declare yourself as Sami, and therefore just choose to disassociate from that culture. Really interesting. Uh, in fact, the Sami is the only indigenous people group that is represented in the EU as I understand it. They have their own um, a parliamentary uh, sort of representation, which is really interesting. Among uh, all the, like among Sweden, Norway, and Finland, all together, they have a parliament together. Yeah, exactly. Like all the countries are combined, which is really interesting. I, I, I want to know more about that, but I don't know much about mm -hmm. that. So take that as what you will and look into it yourself if you're interested, I guess. I love it in different cultures where they show whether or not you're married or you're not married. In an American culture, we have rings on our left hand on the ring finger, right? But in Sami tradition, um, some of them wear belts. And so this belt, because it has squares, supposedly he's married. If the belt has circles, then he would be single and available. Although I think that it changes among the different Sami um, peoples, yeah. yeah. but. That's super cool. Like, if you have your eye on a man, you can see whether or not he's married or not. 
It's, a, I mean, a great way for dating, I guess. Yeah. The Sami people of Lapland used to be very nomadic, so they would move with their herds of reindeer. But nowadays they actually have places where they stay, like houses. They don't actually live in these type teepees anymore, although that is very traditional. Um, but yeah, they live like normal people nowadays, and they're able to tell where their little rangers are gonna go. Like, they, they're pretty predictable. I think it's really interesting. Uh, again, I, I keep comparing it to the indigenous people that we have, mm -hmm. but they have teepees. Yeah. Like, they have a slightly different word for it, but it's it's also very similar in uh, in their language. It's like keepy or something. I can't I can't do it. <laughs> I don't it, know but. what it is. But and actually, um, it would be covered in reindeer fur. So this is just to be able to show you the inside. But yeah, pretty cool. I I love nomadic people groups. That gets me excited. Like I love learning about them. I just want to go live with a nomadic people group at some point. That's like a dream of mine. <laughs> hundred thousand reindeer in Lapland more reindeer than actual people which is crazy but even the crazier thing is that every single one of those reindeer are owned by someone there are no free roaming reindeer although the reindeer owners let them free roam everywhere and they know where they're going to be because they hang out in packs but every person who owns their reindeer has a little cut that they do in the reindeer's ear and that's how they tell whose reindeer are whose so cool, I have no idea how they can have that many different cuts to tell who the owners are. As well as, I asked if I could maybe buy a um, group of reindeers, you know, <laughs> to keep and uh, herd around, but supposedly they are passed down through the generations. So they're family owned reindeer farms. And they use them for meat and the fur, different things um, for a living. So they're pretty much reindeer farmers, but they call them herders or something. I don't know. Unlike the reindeer who are owned, there are moose in Lapland, and they are so ginormous. This guy isn't even as big as how they can get, but supposedly we have heard from many Finnish people that you have to watch out when driving on the roads because if you hit one of these guys, your car is donezo. <laughs> these are so big, but supposedly they're afraid of people, so it's like a special sighting if mm -hmm. you see one. They're very, very cool. One of the main reasons for modern expansion of Robaniami was the logging industry. Uh, so I think the last time that they floated rog logs down the river for transportation was in 91, but now there's dams and different things and you can't really float the logs, plus it's kind of dangerous. So now they use like trucks and rail transportation, but logging is still really huge here. Uh, you just don't see big giant log jams in the middle of a river. What's funny is where we grow up in Washington state, uh, you can still see some log jams to this day. It's very infrequent and it's a little bit more out of the way, but you can still see it. And I think that's really interesting that that culture was also here. This is a river. You can't really see it with all the little logs in there. This guy's job is to just move the logs around so that they'll float down the river. That would have been a really hard job down back in the day, but um, they don't do this anymore, luckily, for, I mean. A myriad of reasons. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool looking, but. Uh, but you can't even see the river. Who can, nobody can swim in this river. Oftentimes when we're doing these videos, you can really tell what time of day it is um, because it's dark or it's right out. But you have no idea when we're finishing this video. You have no idea. It could, it could be midnight right now. Anyways, that is it from the Science and History Museum. I think I've nailed it down. Uh, and I, it's really, really cool to see like different parts of the world's history and their mm. cultures and like it's a yeah. totally different take on some of the same things that we know. Yeah, but it's like a lot of specifics that we've never learned, never yeah. even heard about, which I love learning about. Like mm -hmm. now I just have so much more appreciation for the Salmi, the Finnish, mm -hmm. reindeers. The Arctic. I mean, like, literally everything. We have a lot more to come from our Nordic Summer Series and more from Finland still. In fact, in our next video, we might be meeting a certain Santa Claus. Mm. It's gonna be awesome. And puppies! So, Wayfam, <laughs> I hope we encouraged you to get there and travel today. We'll see you in the next video. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> a huge shout out to all of our patrons who helped make this video possible. If you want to follow more, go to Instagram at wayawaymag. 
Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our second channel, Way More, if you want to see way more from us.